Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second episode of the Pro Am Beach Soccer Podcast. Today, we are with Francis Farber, head coach of both the men and women's U.S. beach soccer national teams, we, where we discuss his past and support and vision for beach soccer. I'm Corey Stevenson, and I'm with my co-host, Robert Humphrey. Welcome to the show, Francis. Welcome to another episode of Pro Am Beach Soccer. I have my co-host, Corey Stevenson, and we have a special guest today, Mr. Francis Farber. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for the invitation. I want to get to a couple of questions today, a couple of uh, conversations. First of all, how's uh, COVID uh, treating you now? Yeah, well, so far so good. I've been, I've, I've been COVID free, but uh, it's been tough, you know, as far as work. You know, I work in soccer, so with the national team, we haven't been able to do any any live trainings, you know, but taking the opportunity to, to do, you know, started doing trainings over Zoom, you know, online virtual. So it's something new that we didn't do before. So we actually get together once a week and we train as a team. So I guess from this, the COVID situation, that's something positive that came out of that. Okay. You know? Okay. How do those meetings, those online meetings go for you? I know it can kind of be disruptive or a new thing for some people. So how, how are those going? Well, it, it's actually going pretty well because we do, you know, it's something that we started little by little. It was, we started actually with the girls, the women, the female players. We started doing it at home. We started doing it like a home workout. Everybody had a soccer ball in the living room. And, you know, it started, uh, I also, I also have a, a soccer school here in Miami. It's called FBSFC and, and I coach a lot of kids. So with the pandemic hit, we were doing a lot of online classes. So I kind of learned on the fly and got better with it. So, you know, what I do now with the team is basically with the national team, I, I make a video on the sand. I go to the sand, I make a video mm-hmm. and I send it to them ahead of time. And they have to go to a beach or a park. You know, nowadays there's a lot of parks that have sand. So they could do it on a, it could be a volleyball court. They just need a little bit of space. 20 by 20 yards, not even. And they just set, they have already like all the instructions, like the grids shows them the setup. And then I get, I get connected and I kind of, I show them a video. This is exercise one, two, three, and four. So we're going to do this four exercises and we're going to work for this amount of time. So I tell them, okay, guys, go exercise one. They already know they got to do it and exercise. Okay. Break, recover 15 seconds, then exercise two. And, then we'll add four more exercises. So usually we do about 12 different exercises and you just vary the intensity, the time, you know, little by little. So they actually get a pretty good workout. So we do, we do the men and the women on Friday. We do two different sessions. So it's been already since May. So we've got a lot of actually more training than I think we would have gotten with, without COVID. So that's really? really positive. Yeah. Of course you don't get, the the tactical part of the game which is you know you're playing and you know the movements on the field those kind of things but you do get a lot of technical work and fitness so that part you you like do we're doing well with that we just have to add the the part where you do the games and and that situation okay so with with the practices i guess being in i guess their own space you have seen increases in certain areas or better performances in certain areas yeah at least in the fit, fitness part and the technical part those two areas i think players are are, are doing well okay uh do you think there's any like downfalls or anything that decreases the fact that they are in their own space no because some of them are at the beach some of them are actually got a pretty nice setup they got a little tripod that I could see them. They have their little headsets, and it's it's pretty. I can show you if if you go to my if you I don't know if you go to my Instagram, you can actually see I have some videos there. You can see how it. So everybody's like all over the country, and they're they're doing their own training. So it's it's actually pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. So Francis, I don't know if you knew, but our first episode with Ty was about the uh, advantages of training in sand. What what makes you such a proponent of training in sand? With just real quick. Yeah, I think that the training on the beach is amazing. It, it helps a lot with, with, for a player, you know, especially for kids and, and even for adults. It just helps you with your stability. You know, you, you get a lot stronger. You're, you have, your body's always in an unstable surface. So, it, like, if you're recovering from injuries or preventing injuries, 
is is really good because you get all your joints get a lot stronger your muscles it also helps you with your your speed agility with your plyometrics if you you know your jumping case if you do all this on the sand and then when you do it on grass it's a lot easier and i could tell you from experience a lot of our players uh here youth players they 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 always train on the sand we always at least once a week we try to take them to the sand and it's great it's great for them you know you see how they develop and and it just is like uh you know it's like a boost when you go back on grass it's like your technical game your fit your fitness everything improves a lot so it's really good really good for you okay uh pick to pick back off what uh Corey said you weren't always a coach you were a player right yes sir i so, i played yeah uh now you can continue i want to hear no i play i played i i was the i played for the national team for 14 years i had uh played on eight world cups four fifa world cups and four before before beat soccer was fifa and I played a lot of tournaments, so it was amazing. It was a great experience. I played in a lot of clubs. I played in for Seattle Sounders, beach soccer. I played for Corinthians in Brazil. So a lot of good experiences playing beach soccer. So what would you say be your one of your one of your greatest memories of playing for the team? One of my greatest memories, I would say, uh, participating uh, in 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 a in World Cups, I think that was an amazing experience when you hear the anthem and, and you know, just the whole, you know, like 2005 was the first FIFA World Cup. So you were under the FIFA umbrella, just everything was on the FIFA website. It was on a lot of TV and, and scoring a goal. I scored a goal against Japan. That was a great memory. So that was, that was probably that. I, I remember also 2007 when we won we won the qualifiers. There, there was a qualifier that it was in Mexico and it was the South American teams and the North American teams playing together. And we actually beat uh, Uruguay in the final. So we were the champs of that. That was a great experience as well. You know, um, there's so many. 2013, after I, I was almost done playing and I kind of made a comeback, I came back and I made it again to the World Cup. That was a pretty cool experience. You know, just yeah. a lot of memories. You know, like Francis, what what made you come back? If I could ask that. In two thousand thirteen. Yeah, what made you come back? Uh, I just because I love playing. I love playing. I, um, you know, that it was, the you know, a new new coach had come into the team, and at the time, you know, I was before him. I was always I was a starter. I was a captain. He came in. I I wasn't the captain anymore. I wasn't a starter, so you know I. It was hard. It was hard for me as a player, uh, but I, you know, that's that's what I think sports is about. It's about dealing with adversity, and I, I kept fighting. I kept improving. It made me a better player. I, and I ended up making that World Cup, being a starter again, being the captain again, and later on, that coach is the one that gave me the opportunity to be uh, an assistant coach with the national team. It, it was the coach at the time, Mary Soto. So I think those are things that make you better. Sometimes we as a player or even kids, they get adversity. Coach comes in, put you on the bench. You're not getting as much playing time. But instead of you, you know, you should take a, that situation as a challenge and, and to make you a better player. You know, you should, okay, what can I do better? Your approach should be, how can I improve? How can I become a starter again? And, and that's what I did. It was, at first, it was hard. But that's what I did, and and that's that's what made me come back and and play another play another World Cup in 2013. Also, did the younger players on that 2013 team look up to you as somebody who had a veteran who had had been there before? Yeah, I believe so because I was always, you know, I always had a very uh, work ethic, train hard, commitment, not miss any practices, always be there. So I think that was the standard that, that we try to set with the players. And and some of those players now, I'm, I coach them. So I was teammates with them, and now we, they're, you know, I'm their coach. So years later, we've had the opportunity to, you know, to, to work together, but in a different capacity. Being a captain in, in the World Cup Series must have been like a, a, a dog. Describe that, that feeling or just that role that, that, that you had. 
No, it's it's a it's an amazing experience. It's it's not only just being a player in the World Cup is is it's a lot of fun, you know, and and it's you know you you want to be you want to be a leader within the team, but you also want to work together with the team to achieve a goal, you know, and and as, as a player, you know, we're we're close. I'll I'll give you an example. Two thousand seven, we were like like a second away from from qualifying. We lost to Portugal in like the last play of the game, um, you know. But it was it was exciting. We 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 lost our first game, then we won our second game. We beat Iran, and then we lost to Portugal in the game to qualify. So you know, it's 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 an exciting feeling. You know, it's an exciting feeling. Sometimes not everybody is is your friend, you know. But sometimes there's certain things you have to do to to lead the team and 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 the team looks up to you. I'll give you an example. In 2006, there was a tournament. We were playing the qualifiers in Costa Rica, and we had just won a game. It was a difficult game. I think we won three to one or something. And one of the players didn't get to play a lot. So on the way back in the bus, the player was like, you know, like with a very upset. He was sad. He had a, like a puppy face. You know, like when you don't. Everybody wants to participate. But I, I think it wasn't the moment. It was the moment of the team. The team won. And if you're part of a team and you don't get to play, you still got to be happy for the team. So I kind of called them out in front of the whole team. You know, sometimes that's what you got to do as a captain. I said, look, I, you should be – why are you upset? Just because you didn't play, you should be happy. We're, we're all a team and, and the team won, you know, and, and maybe next game is your chance to play. So things like that, I think those are the important things that – that you have to support your coach with with those kind of things because sometimes the coach is not always around in in the locker room or in those those kind of moments. I think that's the role of a captain. So let, let's go back to that game against Iran in 07. Uh, you represented our country in an important moment and a sign of peace uh, when you played against Iran. Does that ring how as a highly memorable experience in your opinion? And have you reflected upon that? considering the, the current state of international affairs today? Yeah, that was, that was uh, you know, it was before we were, we were playing around and it was one of those moments at that time, you know, how there's, you know, the US, like the whole turmoil, U.S., Iran, U.S. And it was one of those weeks where it was like very close to being a war. So everything in the newspaper was talking about U.S., Iran, and and they were making it like this, war on the field off the field so you know the night before i decided um i was i was in brazil i was talking to my best friend there and i decided to go ahead and and uh as a sign of peace because it was all this tension around the game i i got a, a bouquet of white flowers a dozen bouquet of white flowers and i didn't even tell the coach and i I I asked, we had, you know, every team has like, a, it's called an attache, which is like a FIFA signs you like, a, it's like a person that that takes care of the team. They're with the team the whole tournament, whatever the team needs. So this girl, I told her, look, can you please put these flowers right in the corner before you enter the field? So as I enter the, the field, I bring the flowers out and I give them to the Iran captain. And I think it was a great gesture because uh, it kind of like broke that ice between ice, us and them, and it showed that we're all athletes. So it doesn't matter if the U.S. and and Iran are about to go to war politically, but on the field, we are all athletes, and we are, you know, we're gonna play and we're gonna play fair. So that was just, that's what happened. And then the game ended. We won seven six. It was an amazing game, and actually, it was a. In the major Brazilian newspaper, in the open, they had a story about that because we were, after the game, one of our players, uh, I think it was Zach and, and Jevin, they went to pick up the Iranian keeper because he was on the floor crying like this. So there's a picture. And, and, it, and, and the editorial is talking about how sports, how politics should look more into sports and how they should take a page of, about, on sports. That it's and and at, and at, after the game in the hotel, all the Iranian players came to us. We exchanged shirts, and nowadays that guy that I exchanged the flowers with, he's the coach of Iran. So every time I see him, he gives me a un, Iranian uniform. He hugs me, you know. So I think it's it it's to sh it shows that sports bigger than politics, and 
So it was a great, I think it was, that was probably, you asked me before, that's that probably outside of soccer, in soccer, probably my greatest experience. That was a really good experience. Yeah, I think that's just an example of how sports transcends like um, oh, world yeah. events. And yeah, of course. But let me ask you this. How did, how did your teammates react? Obviously, your, your two teammates after the game went to go pick up, so they responded well. And then let me ask you, how did the opposing players react to that? Uh, my coach was a little surprised because he, I didn't give him a heads up. So he was like, he thought I should have given him a, head, a heads up. And I, I really, it was the moment was so crazy. The stadium was full. I think Brazil was playing the next game. It was like such a crazy environment. I think it softened the Iranian players, to be honest with you. Just the gesture of the white roses, it it really softened them a little bit. So I think that that was that's what happened in our players too. It's just you know, it's a, I, I think it's it's just a gesture of peace. That was my whole intention. Okay. Well, since you have been playing against different ethnicities, different ethnicities and different walks of life, what would you say for the U.S. What would what would you say be the difference between the way they play and us as far as other countries than our than us? About, about style of play. Uh, well, I think our team, you know, usually we're, we're a very physical team, you know, a lot of fitness. Uh, it just depends, depends on the team. For example, Brazil on the beach is, is like Brazil on the grass. They're very technical, skillful, great on one-on-one. Um, different teams. Iran is a great team. They they develop. They play very well as a team. Uh, Russia is actually one of the top teams in beach soccer in the world, and and they're teams that train a lot. So I think this is what what our goal is. Our goal is to for us to to be able to emulate some characteristics from those teams. You know, get better technically. But I think our, our fitness is, is, is a thing that is really good for our, one of our biggest qualities. And our players can be very fit, uh, very athletic. Um, but then we have to combine all those other factors. You know, the, the tactical part of the game, it's a game where you play five against five. So if one or two players get lost in what you're trying to do, you're in a very big numerical disadvantage. You know, if uh, also the technical aspect is really important. If you're able to hold on to the ball, dribble you beat one guy then you're in a numerical advantage so those little things those are things that we as a team need to pick up from other cultures and and, and improve so you would say uh technic- our technical skills will be somewhere where we need to grow in yeah yeah we have we have very technical guys we have uh some of our players have great skills um but we, we, I think it's always an area where you can improve. You know, I think that's the key because if, if you can pass well, if you can control well, if you can shoot well, I think that gives you an advantage over other teams. So you just got to sharpen those skills. I think that's the key for us as a team. Okay. Uh, being, all right, being that you were a player and then not only were you a player, you were a captain of a team and then transition to a coach of a national team. Uh, what what do you plan to do differently than your predecessor in regards to the growth of the sport? In regards to what, I'm sorry? The sport, the, the actual uh, beach soccer sport. What would you plan to do d- differently than those before you? Well, I think uh, I want to c- continue and, and, and with their professionalism, their, their dedication to the program, you know, set a high standard for the national team, all those things I want to continue. But what I want to increase is to be able to give the players uh, an environment where they can play constantly, you know, being support, getting support from the private sector, from the federation, where we can have more tournaments, where we can have leagues, actual leagues where, where players can play consistently games at a high level and train consistently on the beach. Because that's what I think we need to go to the next level. Because I think if if we get our players and we put them in an environment where they're constantly training, constantly playing at a high level, we can compete with all these countries in the world. 
because that's a, that's what we're lacking. We have tournaments, but we have tournaments uh, one week in here, one week in there. We don't have a consistent league where maybe you're playing every weekend and you're training during the week, preparing for those games. You know, I think that's that's what's what we're missing because that will really take. You know, other things that we're trying to do differently, we're trying to create with the Federation coaching courses. So coaches that want to get into beach soccer can can do a course, a coaching course to become a beach soccer coach. I think that's another area that's important. And uh, going all over the country looking for talented players. That's what I'm doing right now. Unfortunately, right now I got to stay put because of COVID. But as soon as I'm allowed to travel, my goal is to go to different places and 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 really look for talent. Look for talented players that can help our national team in the men and the women's side. So what do you look for in t- your players when you scout? I'm looking for players that are athletic, agility, size. I think size in the sport is important, but it's not always, but kind of like in basketball, that's where a lot of teams win. Like if you look at the Russian team, a lot of these European teams, the guys are very big, 6'2 and up. Of course, you have some shorter guys, just like in basketball. They, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to be tall, but those are certain certain qualities: speed, technical ability, ability to play in the air, to dribble fast in the sand, to run in the sand, to hit the ball well, all those things, and to have a good, very good fitness level because the game is back and forth. You got to be able to be in the game three, four minutes, sprinting forward and backwards, forward, backwards, forward, backwards for three, four minutes. So it has to be similar to, I guess, indoor soccer. I don't know if you guys ever read something like that. Well, if you had a, a vision of beach soccer reaching its full potential, what would that look like locally, um, domestically, and internationally? Here in the U.S., you mean? Oh, well, in, in, okay. In well, lo- locally, I would say where you have teams in, in cities and competing in a, in a national league where they're playing, a, they have a season where they play, you know, a, let's say a four, just like here, a three, four month season or even more, where they play games on the weekends. Uh, they're uh, having sponsors so players can, can receive a compensation for playing on these teams and, and having a calendar, you know, a more set calendar for the national team. Uh, also at the CONCACAF level where we have not only qualifiers, but maybe we have tournaments in, in CONCACAF, you know, here locally having a cup, having a, a national championship and internationally, our teams being able to participate at the club level in international competitions. That would be an ideal situation where, where there's more investment and, and players can, can receive, you know, uh, some type of payment. That would be the ideal situation. How would you go about funding that payment? Well, you have to, if you have, you have, if you have a league, teams will have an incentive to play. They have sponsors. They can get a sponsorship. They can maybe find a way to, to the games to be broadcasted. Um, you know, that's, that's a good question. You know, right now I'm just focusing on, on trying to find the players, but Mm-hmm. I'm I'm trying to work with people that are interested in, in creating a league. So I'm supporting them because it's important for me as a national team coach that there's leagues so I can that's where I can find the players. Well I did a little a uh, little research about your uh the club you helped co found in Florida that you talked about a little bit earlier. Do you plan on expanding that to other states or have you already looked into that? Well, that, that is a, a possibility. I've had actually requests from other, other states that they want to implement the same method because basically what we do is, uh, it's called FBSFC, is foot, football, beach soccer, futsal. So it's all three types of soccer. So the kids learn how to play all three and they compete mostly outdoor because that's where most of the competitions are. Uh, but it, it's a great format and it's really good for developing players. We've had several players from our club that just got uh, selected by the Inter Miami Academy, like the, you know, the David Beckham's team, you know, 
So we always, the idea is to develop these players and I think it's a great method. So we're always looking for opportunities to expand our, our, our program to other places, yes. So what is something that, that you are looking into? I'm sorry? I said, so what is something that you are looking into? Yeah, definitely, yes. Okay. But right now my priority is, again, with the national team to to find players because we have qualifiers coming up soon and, and World Cup next year. So that's that's my priority right now. We understand that uh, Ty partially credits you for his role where he was honored to uh, serve as the U.S. national team assistant coach while you were the captain. Do you consider that a wise decision uh, looking back on that now? And how was that experience with Ty? No, the experience was great. I think uh, Ty, you know, he he was a great assistant coach. He He brought a lot to the team. He really supported the head coach and the team and everything that we needed. And especially him being from the West Coast at the time we had some players from the East Coast some players from the West Coast so I think that kind of helped with the whole with 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 the whole process I think he did a great job I think he was a great assistant coach do you do you think that you being the captain aided your role yeah. of being a coach I think it did it did, but not always. It's not always a, a winning formula. I've seen, I know a lot of captains that are not good coaches, but I think it was. I was not only a captain. I was always someone in the field that always was always trying to read the game and understand the game. Always helping the coaches, whatever I saw in the field that they could help them to prepare the team better. So I think it did help me. It did help me because I I always, you know, I didn't shy away from the moment, from speaking, from from being a leader, from saying what I thought. So I think it, it did help me. Do you think that it it aided you in helping point out captain or people with cap, captain capabilities? Like, okay, this person has, I, I see this in that person. Do you, do you see that? In or, players? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I think that the captain is, is an extension of the coach. He's not just a player, he's someone that it's it's the coach's voice on the field and off the field. And when the players are just the players, you know, I think the captain has to help the coach uh, create the culture on the locker room and and hold the players accountable. You know, if players are not doing what they're supposed to, you know, I think that's the captain's role as well. So, yeah, definitely. So uh, I also did some research, and I understand that last year that you were at the uh, beach soccer national championship. Uh, I guess this isn't like the first time you were in that type of environment. Can you explain, you know, the feeling of it? Yeah, I think it was it was a great. Actually, I actually was there uh, to look for players, and ended up that one of the teams invited me to play, and I and I played a little bit, and it was it was fun. It was fun. It was, I think it was a gr great setup. You know, the setup was top notch. The the fact that the games were broadcasted on TV or streamed, um, the level was was good. You know, I think it it's we need we need more of those. We need more of those national championships. You know, we need uh, again, like I said, we need a league. You know, not just one week in a year. We need, you know, 30 weekends a year where we play, you know? That's my opinion. Do you do you think it's an event that top uh, beach soccer teams should attend? The championship? Oh, definitely. They have, I think they have to be there. You know, I know not all, in the women's side, a lot of the women were in the tournament. The men, not every, not all the players were, just a few of them. But I think it's 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 key. I think if you want to play for the national team, I, I think you need to support um, all the tournaments that are not locally, nationally. You need to support those tournaments. You as a player for for the growth of the sport. I think I think the players need to be ambassadors in their zone. So wherever they live, if you live, for example, uh, an example the tournament was in San Diego. If you live in San Diego, 
and you are from San Diego or there's a small tournament in San Diego, I think you as a player need to go and support that tournament, share your knowledge with younger players that want to get involved, you know, because it's, it's a new sport. I think it's a, there's a lot of ra- grassroots that needs to be done. And if we as me as a coach, our players, they need to, to plant those seeds for the future. So I think we all got to invest a little bit and, and that's how, because then more people will find out and all, if you go to that tournament and, and you get in touch with a hundred people, those hundred people are going to be hundred people that will support us when we go to the world cup. You know, you just got to look at the big, big picture and get more people involved in beat soccer. So being in the world cup and being in championships, does, does the feeling, I guess, I don't want to say ever get old, but is it like I've been here before? It's just, I'm here. Or how does how does that feeling feel the more that you are there? No, I think it doesn't get old. Every time you compete, you get butterflies and you get excited. Even as a coach, you know, I think it's the same. It's it's a different role, you know, but it but it's because it's a lot more mental coaching. But you know, you have to be always thinking, reading the game, uh, psychological aspect of the game, but preparation you have to do a lot of preparation before the game before the practices but it's still competing I, I love competition so it's it's it always get those butterflies doesn't matter if it's a small tournament you always get excited about it and 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 get up for the competition going along with that how do you see the responsibility of coaching both the men and women's team do you find yourself under a lot of stress could you explain that to me uh, yeah, it's, I think it's, uh, well, I started with the women first and I was an assistant with the guys. I think, uh, it's a lot of responsibility because it's basically if beach soccer goes well in the U S it's my responsibility. If it does, you know, so it's, it's, it's a lot of responsibility, but I think I have a great group of players. So that helps, you know, it's the, the ladies are amazing. There's really good players and they're pushing each other to be better. Same thing with the guys. There's a lot of guys that are really good players and there's so many new guys coming on board now, you know, bringing in new blood. So I think it's, you know, the, the players that we have in both the men and the women makes it, uh, makes, makes my job easier. And, and the support, you know, we have a fitness coach, we have technical directors. So all those things, you know, helps create a great program. So, Hopefully with time, you know, when we get back to competition and we start playing again and we start having tournaments like like your tournament and, and other tournaments, you know, things will fall in place and we'll, we'll have a successful program. So so trust is a really, between you and your player, coach and player is a really big factor there. Uh, wh- which team would you say is more challenging to coach? it's just it's just different it's they both have different challenges you know uh i think the women they they're more responsible and they hold each other accountable between them you know they're so it's just they're so responsible you know it's it's amazing how you know what the guys are a little bit different but the guys have more experience they've been playing longer uh but you know it's 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 just different. It's just like women and men, you know, dealing with women and dealing with men. I think that's, so you have the pros and the cons on both. Did you, did you find coaching women to be particularly uh, the transition, that transition be a little harder or would you say it was kind of easy for you to transition into coaching women opposed to the men's team? No, I think it was, it was easy. It was easy because the women are great. We have a great, great group of, 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 of players. So um, it was, it was, it was easy, you know, it's just like I've coached women before girls mostly, but not the, not a women's national team. So it was great because the girls are great. Um, again, they're so committed, so dedicated. They really are unselfish. They, they put the team before themselves. So that, I think that, that makes it easier. That makes it, you know, it makes it easier, easier, an easy job. So was there a certain thing that made you say, I want to train men as well, or you were just like, you know what, I want to go ahead and reach everybody? 
Uh, the, what was, I'm sorry, what was your question? Since you started out training girls and training women, was there anything that made you say, I wanted to start training men, or did you just want to reach out to everyone, but you touch all the demographics that you could? No, my goal is, is, is like, I really love the sport. So my goal is to develop the sport. So I was given the opportunity with the women and I embraced it and I, and I really love it. And I think the women, we're going to do great things once we get an opportunity to show what we can do. And the same thing with the guys, you know, they offer me that opportunity to do both. I know it's a challenge, like you said, but I, I want to help grow the sport. And I think the men and the women can help and we can, grow grow the sport together and really have an impact you know me as a player i saw the things that you see it from a perspective and now as a coach certain things that maybe i can make it better for the players and for the sport francis what do you plan i mean um to them to you what are the most important steps regarding the growth of the, uh, the game in the u.s the growth of beach soccer in the u.s I think the most important steps is uh, we need to start at the youth level. That's, that's key. Because if the kids know the game, learn about the game, fall in love with the game, get exposed to the game, I think that's the main thing. So start at the grassroots level. Uh, then, uh, like I said, we need to have some type of league, something more organized where players have an environment where they can compete. And, and, you know, right now, some of the tournaments have a, a really good cash prize. So I think maybe if we can find a way to consolidate some of those tournaments and, and make it into a league where uh, people are, the, the goal here is for us to attract better players and to attract players that want to train, want to commit, want to, and that, and that will help us build a strong national team. I think if we have a strong national team and, and we do well at the international level, that everything will trickle down. You know, if, if you're doing well at the international level, the youth tournaments will do better. The kids want to play more, you know, and, and, and so forth. So I think, you know, I guess having international success is key. You speak of a cash prize and you've trained with men and women. Do you believe that they are compensated equally? Uh, in Not in every tournament. I know there was a tournament in Virginia beach that like they approached me a few years back. They had a man in a women's tournament and they had the men would play in the stadium and the women would play in the outs. They had two stadiums, a bigger and a smaller one. The men would play in the big stadium. The women would play in the small stadium. The men would have cash prize. The women wouldn't. So one of the things I told them, you know, they kind of said, Hey, we want your feet back. How can we improve? And I said, look, one of the things you have to do is, start with a cash price for women, put them to play in the stadium. They need to play. If the men play the final in the state, you know, the same amount of games in the stadium. Uh, so those are little things. I know they've, they started to add that, but it's still not equal. The price is not equal for the men and the women. I think there's still a significant difference. So I think we still got tries to, to get there. I think that would be, I think that would be ideal. Would you, you say know? that, would you say that money is the only inequality that, that you see in men and women with soccer? As far as the tournaments? As far as the tournaments, right. Yeah, well, it depends on the tournaments. I know some tournaments do actually do more for women and showcase the women and promote the women. So it just depends on the tournament. Uh, but I think uh, at the youth level, I think they, they're pretty equal. To be honest. What I've seen from the tournaments – at the youth level, the, the men and the women get pretty similar treatment, you know, in my in my view, I'm in beach soccer. Now maybe at in the in the pro level when they play tournaments that there's a cash prize, yeah, maybe the the men's have a bigger prize than the women. You know, that I think the right thing would be to have the same price. And for my interest as a national team coach, I think if you have a bigger prize than the women, that will attract better players. So I think it should be equal, my opinion. Um, do you see any inequalities from the women's team that you coach? That you coach, have you ran into any any of that? No, no. In the national team, mm -hmm. no. Correct. They're they're both treated the same. They have the same support, like if, if the same amount of trainers, and they, it's it's you know they're treated the same. 
It's just a matter of the women's that hopefully that, that there's more international competition so we can get more more competition. But we have the same that, that you know you see, we have the same coach, so I I put the same amount of effort into both teams. So from my perspective, this is the same type of treatment. And whatever they get as as a per diem, you know, when we have camps, when we travel, it's the same as well. At this level, at least in beach soccer, it's the same. Okay. So, Francis, I, really, uh, I think that's all the questions we have for you today. I think we really thank you for answering, taking your time to answer and come on, the, on our podcast and answer these questions. It was really insightful. And um, we hope that you do achieve your goal of um, spreading uh, or furthering beach soccer um, throughout the U.S. Perfect. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for promoting the sport. And, and let me know if I can help you guys in any ways. Okay? Okay, thank you. You got it, guys. Thank you. Good luck. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Francis, we would like to say thank you for taking your time out of your very busy schedule to come on the show. And a very big shout out to our listeners for tuning in. 